Okay, Kasna crew on the blue side are attacking into Ding on the red side defending. And Dak, you're seeing it looks like a rush here from Kasna crew. Well, looking at the Bachas, they might be trying to get onto the cap straight away, but Ding is staying together as a unit, which is the correct call against this lineup from Kasna crew, who probably put the three Bachas on the cap, try and force Ding into a rotation and then pounce on towards the tanks. Kreitz gets the spot on those three bat chats, immediately gets himself safe. That's very good. Now, Shockey's just coming around the corner here. Positive with him as well, Daki. And it looks like Ding are just going to go right into these EMX. But look at the damage that Shockey's just taken. He's down in an instant as Stefan wipes him out. Shockey's overextending there, and Ding have already lost the tank as Kazna crew continue to pummel them. Yeah, not sure what uh, Shockey's was doing there, but now Elian's in trouble as well, and he needs to back around the corner. So far, so good for Kazna crew. They've even taken an HP lead. Two tanks down. This is the thing. Kazna crew can now get the reloads and just finish off Ding. Positive down now as well. So Ding have lost three tanks. They've continued to take damage now. Mertorius and the E100. Kasna crew have also lost two tanks. They've lost Call Me Piotr and Vetso in the bat chat and the tier 9 bat chat, but they have the gun advantage right now. Although it's swinging back round into Ding's favour as Ding are actually being able to take out another tank. But look at this. Breaking it coming round the back and Kreitz is still chasing them. Remember what I talked about, about these reloads and about getting out and getting in again. Now Ding, if Mertorius can get those connections out at least one or two more, they might actually swing this because Kasna crew is now even tight this is not ideal for these autoloaders. Kasna crew have reloaded. You see Ders coming around here, full clip out, able to get into the tanks. He doesn't know. I mean, he has side armor onto Hulk at the moment. It's a really nice shot if you can clip him out. Hulk desperately trying to turn the rest of his body to face it. Kareets getting taken out there by Nexus, and he goes down. He's a light tank. That doesn't really matter in the fight at the moment. Mertorius getting the kill on Hyba, and Daki, this is going right to the wire. I can't even predict who's going to get this right now. Right now, it's looking like, ding, if Hokna can get away from Ders without getting tracked, that's perfect. And now break and finish off Stefan, and then it's just Durs, and Durs doesn't even have enough shots to kill Hoknik. Ding, they've turned it around. Breaknik getting the kill there on Stefan. It's only Durs now able to clip out, but he's now on a reload as Hoknik and Breaknik can shoot into him. Durs will actually perhaps, will he come off reload just before no, Breaknik? No. But Hoknik's just going to be able to finish him off in time now, yep. He won't even get there. So fantastic turnaround there from Ding. That fight was just absolutely electric, went right down to the wire. There's two things which Ding was either thinking. Either we're thinking it was some split. Uh, you know, the usual split. Mm -hmm. You put Bachas on the cap and then the 50 Bs come around through that alley to try and flank on the side and didn't expect 50 Bs to be where they are. Or Shockish was literally making a shield. I, I hope it was option number one and we're they got surprised because Shockish's wreck did kind of block uh, Kazna from peeking the corner, but it didn't really. So I think Ding had a bad read on what Kazna crew was doing. Seems like they were expecting a flank from somewhere, the 50 beasts to come from a different angle. Yeah. Shrokish seemed surprised with Stefan being there. He really did. But the thing was, the fact that these three Bachas were on the cap actually really worked out in Ding's favor then towards the later stage of the round because when they started reloading, Ding just pushed over because the 50 beasts were running away. Yeah. The Bachas were there and they lost two of them. And then Ding just used the guns, the, the single shooters to work out and Hooknik. They had a massive amount here, 3.5. I mean, even Breakneck, it's, you know, it's very, very hard to play a bad shot correctly on Ghost Town to begin with. And it's even harder to make it work correctly against an all-French loadout. Because you need to be aware of how many shots each and every single individual tank has. If you go in at the wrong time, that's it. You're dead. That's, that's, that's already over. Because you timed it wrong. He timed it perfectly. Actually shouted in the middle of that match that Kreitz was um, on... Uh, the light tank, and he wasn't. He was on the MX-30 for some reason. I thought he was on a 1375. But Breakneck picking up four kills there with 2.7 damage. Hulkneck picking up 3.4 and the kill. Mojo will be extremely happy because Mojo yeah. has him in his fantasy team. You have team. to imagine that Breakneck there did actually two full clips. I mean, 10 shots, 2.7k damage. You already need a full clip to do that, but four kills if they were all really low. That was vital. Kreitz also did a lot of damage, but chasing Haiba there was a little bit of a mistake, you could say, because uh, um, he chased too far. Um, and Nexus came around the corner and killed him for that, yeah, but Haiba not really getting much out, neither did Vets, so neither did Shokish, but, you know, it's the top players that make the difference in this in this yeah. round. Yeah, and it was, I mean, it was very close. It was one side, then the other side, then one side, then the other side. I don't know, if Kazna, they couldn't have run away with these bad shots. They just made sure that they connected all their shots when it mattered, I think. That's the vital part. Meritorious survived for a little bit as well. He got a big shot out. He got a big few big shots out. That's also very vital. If Ders could attract Hulknik as well when he came around, that could have been... It, no, it didn't matter. 
It didn't yeah. matter because Stefan didn't have shots. Stefan was on reload already. If Hoeknik tracks, I mean, if Hoeknik gets tracked, Durs has two shots. Hoeknik was like a three shot. No, but Durs had a full clip and he peeked around the corner. Oh, but he he peeked around the corner, shot Hoeknik, and then yeah, went back. Went the back, the yeah. thing is, he went back because uh, he was alone peeking. Ah, okay. And if sense, he yeah. if he stays on that corner with his 50B and the 100 swings the turret, Stun, yeah. swings the turret, backs out a little bit, then he loses half his HP. And then he needs to peek out again and he gets the second shot from Hoeknik. Yeah. Then it's full HP to none. Oh well. Unlucky, unlucky. Came close though. Very close match between the two of them. So very interesting. Kind of exactly what we expected here between these two teams, to be honest. So let's have a look at the lineups going into round two where the teams swap position. We will now see Ding that are going on the attack and Kasna Crew going on the defense. And well, Daki, there's something new. Kasna Crew uh, seems to be in an experimenting mood today, <laughs> bringing a mouse. We have seen more mouses pop up and Ghost and especially after Tornado Energy used it successfully in the tiebreaker. Um, so, okay, we'll have to see how it works out now. It'll be even interesting how it works out next week. But, you know, that's then, That's this is now. Then going with a yeah. standard setup, though, the i7 for the cap or your 251, they can do pretty much everything with that. Kazna Crudo with 50 Bs, Batshat's mouse, we'll have to see. Okay, let's jump into the action to see just exactly how Kazna Crew are planning to use this mouse as we see that there is a slight whoopsie, so we will be having a quick restart, so bear with us while that happens. Now, let's talk about the mouse, Daki, because you said we might see more of it next week. Yeah, with the uh, turret buff, the HP buff, becomes a monster, really. Gun buff as well, gets insane DPM. I don't know what I'm going to be playing in <laughs> randoms. Uh, probably not. The triple mouse platoon, triple D95 platoon. Probably because the arty is going to be like, oh, hello. Hi. But is it, no, this isn't the one where we get the arty changes as well. It's no. super. So, uh... The thing is, with the mouse, with Kazna crew, they can just split up. They don't have to push because you have a mouse, they have Udas to reset. But if you want to retake that alley, we've seen this on different regions as well. You put the mouse first, he takes most of the shots from the other loaders. The thing is, if you don't focus the mouse, he does a lot of damage. Yeah. If you, if you do focus the mouse, he takes a lot of HP to then go you down. lose all your yeah. clips. The, the thing is, it's like uh, balance on the edge, you know, you need to really pick at the right time what's the correct choice to ignore him or to focus them. Sometimes you need to focus them, sometimes you need to just ignore him and kill everybody else. Kazna crew probably wants to send in the mouse first if Ding does go towards their northern cap, let's say they do. And then they want to send the mouse first to the corner, make him bait the shots and then come in with all their 50 Bs, their batch outs, have a lot of clips and kill the tanks from Ding. The other danger as well as with the mouse is that they have to absolutely make sure that they connect all the shots as well. Yeah, it's, it's a like tricky thing. They have to penetrate thing. the shots, not uh, just connect well, them. The thing is as well, you know, you might have a good shot on the mouse, but with the pen roll, it might not always go through. So that's always also like a little bit of playing with fire. It's going to be bold, whoever's, whoever's driving the mouse has got a lot of responsibility to do, that's for sure. Can actually see, yeah, we can see from here, so okay. Um, Yes, it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, I think I'll give it to Kazna just because the mouse, I think, it might throw Ding, but it's hard to throw Ding. You can't I really, you can't really gonna surprise it, Ding. I'm going to give it to Ding because Ghost Town is always an, an offensive, uh, biased map. It's always been that. It's been in this format. It's been in the previous format. It's very, very hard to win on defense most of the time. It was nice to see um, Ding not using an Udez. Yeah, it was nice indeed, and it worked out well for them. Uh, not surprised they switched away from the Udas. Their tactic became a little bit too readable almost at one point. It's like, you know, how many times can you really afford to use the <laughs> yes. Udas? It's um, like, oh, Udas, where's that going to go? Hmm, what, how are they going to use it? The good thing about the AMX 30 is it's not the greatest frontline tank because of the armor. It just doesn't bounce much, let's be real. It, but it has bounce. a good Won't gun. It, it has a good gun, that's the thing. It has a lot of HP as well. And we saw Kuriz do 2.3k damage in the last round. It allows you to change your tactic on the fly. You can go aggressive with it, but you can also just choose to go defensive. And that's the I most important Kuritz part. I think Kuriz was something like 4th yeah, in that previous game. Yeah, he did 2.3k so yeah. damage, so there's that. Uh, I've it, seen that quite a lot, actually. If the AMX comes down and joins the fight, he actually does quite well, whoever's playing it. Yeah, it's different with the Udas because you need to like press X, go into siege mode. Oh, now I can shoot? Can oh, shoot, they're yeah. around the corner. X. Come out of it. Uh, <laughs> X. Oh, they're yeah. gone again. I'm dead. Wow. Or you can try and shoot out of siege mode, but good luck with that. No way. No way. That's <laughs> the really hard. It. it looks like everything is ready to go once again. So we can jump into action here on Ghost Town and find out, will Ding make it 2-0? to zero? Are our Kasna crew going to bring it back to 1-1? One, one? Well, there's one way to find out. We can jump into the map and then let's see. Who's going to take this one? Is it going to be Ding on the red side attacking, or is it going to be Kazna Crew on the blue side defending? 
So, so far, as expected, a little bit of a split here from Castle Crew because they have the mouse that the key can push in first. They don't have to make a super aggressive play. They're going to do double boost here. Now, this is risky. This is honestly very risky. Um, if Ding does not go towards their Northern Cap, if they decide to bail, they would be putting Stefan up there. Wouldn't be surprised if Stefan even loads a heat clip in his batch at as well. The thing is, putting two tanks on there can really cost you much if the enemy team figures it out somehow. Doesn't seem like uh thing bulldoze we'll have to see how much damage shockish will take the thing is here as well that uh thing is very out of position the thing is though um stefan might actually be spotting for isna because of the positions from kazna crew being very far away you can see them all over the map on three four line isna needs a spot now stefan might be doing that and stefan is probably reloading a heat clip so he can go to isna if needed so that's the planning for kazna crew stefan is spotting isna is shooting okay isna there shooting into Shockish. Now, it's Hyba on the mouse in the middle of the map at the moment. Ding very much spread out here. Looks like they're not fully wanting to commit to that number one. Looks like they're trying to draw Kazna crew in here. Yeah, but you, you see what Kazna crew's plan is going to be still. That mouse will go first to D8 if they decide to retake it. The 50 piece will come from behind. Now, the thing is, though, Ding has a really nice crossfire for this. Because of the positions from the batch rats, if Kazna crew go to D7, they will actually be able to hit them in the side. Now, the question is, is Kazna crew going to stop there for long enough for the batch rats to do the clip? And how much tanks will they lose once they figure it out? Because right now, I'd say Ding is in the superior position over Kazna crew. They are. It's fairly reliant on Yuzni being able to get the resets against Shockish as well. Yeah, but that is also risky. I mean, if he's unlucky, he won't get the reset. We're down to 1 minute 7 seconds. Shock is just blind firing where he thinks Yuzni is. But, I mean, Yuzni has a fairly quick reload here, isn't it, Udez? You know what would ruin the entire tactic from uh, Deng, uh, from Kazna crew right now? If Koritz decided to take speed and go to B6, you know that little bit of a courtyard there that you can drive yeah. inside of? Because Shokesh is not spotting anybody on the corner, and they see Piotr now as well. They kind of know the rest of the positions, right? The 50 Bs, they would spot them already. Koritz drove through the middle. If he would go to B4, 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 B5 right now to try and spot the Udes, he probably would spot the Udes, and they would kill him instantly. Udes would go down, and that would be their cap reset gone, and then Kasna crew would be forced into committing right now. Crete's blind firing there. It's just throwing some stuff on the cap, it seems like. I really want Kuris to just drive out the Udes, honestly. Alien trying to blind fire clip out here. Just third shot out, one more to go, so that's someone to reload now. Kreese won't make a move, I guess, until Alien's reloaded. But still, the cap continuing to go down, and it's purely reliant again on Yuzni. Being able to reset that against Shockers with an HE shell into the, the top of the He's just wasting a lot of ammo here. And that's the thing as well to keep in mind. He doesn't have ammo to shoot forever and ever. 50B is grouping back up in the middle again. The, just keep in mind, Kazna crew will have to make a move at one point because Izni can't afford to fire forever. He will slowly start worrying about ammo. 47 seconds there. Shockish actually just gets, I mean, the hit came in there. Just to, let me think, it was Stefan actually that got the hit there. To, to do the reset, and we're down to 45 seconds. Kasna grouping up here, Diplomat Nexus and Dare sitting back behind Hyba, and it looks like any minute now, Daki, we're going to get a push from them. The thing is, Ding is starting to uh, Stand in a little bit. And they don't know exactly where the 50Bs are, and Isna actually pen shockish. that's impressive. Nice shot there from Isna. Shot. I just hope the Bachelors from Ding don't make an overcommitment based on no information, because <laughs> no information means a lot of information. You know, if you don't see anybody, then you pretty much know where they are. Yeah, I mean, Kuritz just spotted out Dares there. Breakneck is now spotted out Nexus in the middle. Might see some damage being traded across there. There's Nexus actually took a hit from Breakneck. Shockish getting hit at by HE again there on the cap circle. So another reset, but I mean, Ding have a little bit of a read of Kasna crew in the middle of the map here. You see what Izna is doing very, very well is uh, resetting. Moving, resetting, moving. We saw Udes get blind fired up there before from Kazna crew. Actually, Kazna crew blind fired <laughs> Ding's yes. Udes. That was the beginning of the comeback. And Isna is shooting and he's moving. Every time he shoots, pretty much, he's moving. He's just taking a different angle to make sure he doesn't get blind shot. You can see there the shot did not connect and Isna actually moved a little bit. Now, we'll see when he shoots. He should move. It's Unless he'll make me look like a fool. And the new hit indicators that he's stopping himself being shot back at. He's waiting. Stefan has to do another peek. Look at the ammo Isna has left. 
Oof, that was a blind shot. Like he's moving now again. Rounds. No, no, that's that's APCR. Five. Five HE shots. Five. And we're down to one minute four. Positive and Breakneck are rotating round to go north with the rest of four. the team here. Four HE shots. And might we get a push from Ding here? I mean, at some point, can no. Ding just go triple cap? No? They might actually start triple cap and they might push Kuritz first to spot the Ud. Uh, isn't it get a reset? I said four, right? So it's three. It's three shots left. It's enough to be able to reset, but I'm just hoping why it doesn't... Uh, I wish, I really wish they would send Kuritz down the B line to spot. I really wish they did. Mary's going to go up and proxy at Haiba here in just a second. Stefan left, so Isna has no spots anymore. It's blind fire now. Bold. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. But well, they're going to retake. They're going to group up and they should start their retake attempt right now. But Haiba first towards the corner and the 50 B is coming from either behind him or from the side. And there they are. This is this is the push coming in now. Whoa, Nexus already. Eileen was ready for that, but Eileen took two for his troubles as he gets back into safety. Nexus backs off a little bit. Now, this is going to give Ding a huge amount of information. Breakneck is actually coming over a shock. He looks like they're going to double cap Daki. Yeah, but he's not got a reset in the meantime, so it doesn't really matter much. But Breakneck can indeed join. That will push it down to 56 seconds. That will make Kazla Cruz retake attempt go so much faster. It has to go. Be, it has to be quicker. And Haiba took a big shot already from Meritorious in the 100. That's not a good trade at that point because the mouse they didn't have to do that yet. They needed the mouse to do it when the 50 Bs come in now as well. Now that is a lot of HP already removed from him. Haiba coming round there. The shot coming in for Mary. He doesn't connect with it. Haiba gets one back into him. 5 to 6. Now, Haiba will come off reload and Mary will be, they'll be roughly about the same time here, Daki. But how far is Haiba going to push? Is Komi Piotr and Stefan wrapping around the bottom here in the back chats also take damage. Breakneck's taking damage on the cap circles. Haiba actually getting the reset. But he takes another huge shot there from Mary in the face. And now the teams are fully committed and the damage is being traded back for back. The thing is, Breakneck staying on that cap a little bit too long, I'd say. He took so much damage for that. He was full HP, if you remember when he joined, he's now a one-shot. Shokish is taking constant damage as well, and if he dies, then it's going to be cap pressure off for Ding. He actually moved off it, and they're, they're trading even so far. There's no real victory in this round yet. Yep, you can see the HP pools at the top. They're properly, pretty much neck and neck at the moment. Casting the crew slightly down here to Ding. Both teams still have seven guns in the game. It's going to be once the first tank goes down, that's going to be the immediate advantage because it's that extra shot coming in that can chip down health from someone. I think right now Ding is actually in the advantage. He has still lost the alien, but Haiba is down in the mouse, and they're kind of trapped in this little crossfire here where Durs and Diplomat are, and Diplomat will have to go in towards Shockish now. He will take damage, and Mary... Ooh, actually, he doesn't. But now Meritorious is still alive, and that could be the deciding factor here for Ding. Do remember, a lot of the HP is out of the fight for Kazna with Isner. Stefan round the top of the map is going to peek out and get a shot onto Kareets. Kareets needs to get himself safe as Positive comes up through here in the middle, trying to get a flank on the team. This could be a very vital position here, Daki, actually, to do a lot of damage. He's got a full clip to spit out here. Ooh, and a nice shot even. Piotr actually had shots. He needs to be careful, Piotr, here. He can't trade with Positive and that in this location. He's now down to a one-shot as well. Positive managed to get a shot out there into Dares and into Piotr, and Positive's going to want to go after Piotr now as well. If he can get the kill, this is going to swing it into Ding's favour, and it does, but Kasna still have five guns available as well, as Positive actually gets a kill on Nexus now as well. In the meantime, Stefan's taking out Kreets in the RU251, but oh, it's so close again, Daki, between these two teams. Uknik actually get Amorak there, and I don't think he was a one-shot just yet, and Isna gets Positive in the meantime, and it's going back into the favour of Kasna crew here. Yes, Isna has a lot of the HP. There doesn't get connected by Meritorious. Breakneck actually picks that one up, but Stefan trades him in return. This is unbelievable. This is proper blow for blow between these two teams. Neither of them are giving each other an inch. Right now, it's Mary now left. Oh no, Mary actually just loses all his HP there in that single shot. 50 HP. I was just going to say, if you can perhaps survive, and who's doing it? Yisne up in the hill, in that Udez, still surviving. APCR shell still to go. Stefan running and reloading. I was just going to say, Mary still had HP to trade, but no, that's just turned around in an instant. Honestly, this round is pretty over meritorious. It's spotted, so now Stefan can just cross down the one line and stay safe there. You can even just play with Eason and they'll get the kill. Mary will have to pick to kill either the Udes or the Bacha. This should be Kazna Cruz round. He can't kill both, Daki, can he? No, he can't kill both indeed. Mary might get one, but that will be it because now he's already past the reloading point. So he'd have to ram the other one. It's just so unlucky. I mean, this fight was just so crazy. Five minutes left to go. Kasna don't even need to engage. Two seconds, one second. Isney's like, Isney's like, here I am, mate. 34, Isney <laughs> hits him for, and he survives there on 16 health. 
again, right to the wire between these two teams. Breakneck going on the cap, they lost them so yeah. much HP. If he didn't do that, Kazna crew had to come anyways, I think. At that point, they were forced almost because Stefan left. Stefan leaving there told us that Kazna crew were going to commit. Uh, if Shockish didn't get reset it and Breakneck joined the cap then, then it would have been a good move. Yeah. Because he would have the cap push. But exactly when he entered, he got reset and that's the moment Break should have backed off. Uh, isn't there probably a lot of damage in this, but Piotr also, like, it's those small things. Him peeking yeah. there against positive was unnecessary. Yes, he did one sort of damage, but if he plays on the corner with Nexus, for example, then... Uh, positive would have to peak much more. He would have to kill Nexus. He'd take a shot from Nexus. He'd take two shots from Piotr and he'd pretty much be dead. Yeah, I mean also Haiba, when Haiba pushed down um, into Death Alley, he was able to get a shot onto the cap, which took a huge amount of damage down from Shockish, and later on he was able to push Shockish and get the kill. Yisne and the Udes up from that Sniper's Perch, 3.4k damage, uh, 38 shots out. Meritorious doing 2.8k damage there, then positive in the back chat, 2.6. I mean, uh, Yisne, he's actually starting to step up recently from Kazna. I mean, he, simp he pretty much single-handedly won them the game yesterday on uh, Prokhorovka as well when he was scouting for them. A little bit of a factor here as well. I don't know if it would have changed, much, but Hulknik in the T57 took five penetrations. I think he got Amorakt when he would, was more than a one-shot. I think he was like a two-shot, just yeah. about a two-shot. So that's annoying for him there. But yeah, Breakneck, Shockish, Goritz. I, Breakneck could have done a lot more, I think, if he didn't join the cap. I feel like that was a little bit of a mistake to come out there for his team. If, if he didn't go onto that, if he didn't go onto that cap, if he didn't go into that cap, I think Ding almost certainly win that round. Because when Haiba died, those 50 Bs were in a lot of trouble in that crossfire. And if he had HP, he could have gone with positive and cleaned pretty much yeah. all those other loaders up, including uh, including uh, Piotr. So I think Breakneck there is pretty much the deciding factor for this round. Also, if uh, Mary had connected with that shot onto Haiba when Haiba came around the corner... That I, I don't really know why he decided to shoot the underplate. Yeah, I mean, you I could think, see him, like, I think the third quick was, I think the third was a better option at that point. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think if he shot the third, he would probably pent. Possibly, yeah. But, I mean, it's so easy to say when you look back in these things. In the heat of the moment, making those split-second decisions, it can be a win or loss. And certainly between these two teams, it's, there's, there's nothing you can take from either of them. It's not so much you can say, oh, that was a total misplay, because it's like one guy's dead, then an instant the next guy's dead and another guy's dead. It was it was almost difficult just to, to keep up with it all. Yeah, something to keep in mind though, Kazna crew had a 90% victory ratio. Well, has more than 90% now on Ghost Down and Ding still made it very... Uh, a good, good defense ratio and Ding still yeah. made it very, very hard for them to, uh, to close that round. I don't know. I, over those two rounds, Ding lived with a little bit of an advantage. Now, Prokhorovka. Kazna crew, I know you can't hear me, but dear God, please do not push down that 1-2 line. Same lineup as they've used before, Kaznokrum Prokhorovka is an extremely mediocre defensive team, 38%. <laughs> uh, Ding on Prokhorovka, 50% on the attack. So both these teams are about even on that one. But Kaznokrum here with those three heavy tanks, Ding not having RT available to them, it's always a little bit of an, a question, will they be able to dig out the heavy tanks? If Kazna does not go for a push, if they go for the split, it's going to be difficult, I think. Well, let's find out who's going to take the lead here. Will it be Ding? Will it be Kasna Crew? Let's jump into Prokhorovka. Prokhorovka, one of the first maps in the game. Teams start at the regular spawn points as they do in standard battles. Bases are separated from each other by the railway, so the defending team has to choose whether to send their vehicles to the left side, playing them in the centre, or to the right of the railway, occupying the hill and a part of the village. The attacking team usually attacks the first base. However, the teams often go for face-to-face -face confrontation, seven-on-seven, seven, in the hilly terrain at the centre. That's why both teams frequently use vehicles with good gun depression angles and sturdy turrets. Okay, now we have Kasna crew, blue team defending, Ding, red team attacking. And Daki, what do you think we're going to see here from these teams? I very much doubt Kasna crew is going to push the 1-2 line again. It should have ended disastrous <laughs> for them yesterday, if not for standout performance from Nexus and less standout performance from the boys from Oops. They're going to just do a split here. I7 towards the middle, Kranwagen of Stefan. It's going to be playing safe, I think, in some bushes, just due to remain unspotted over there. And then the E5 and the 129 with the SDRV, it's a double combo. It's hard to deal with because of the fact that the E5, you know, from the front against Bachat, hard. Uh, SDRV, even harder. So that 129 is very well protected, especially with Stefan being in within 5 to 10 seconds of rotation at any given point. 
And two batches is an A6, probably to just do some damage on Isna's spot if they can, because he's in the bush over there. Korit did get spotted. That gives information that there is the spotter available for Kazna in that eastern side towards that B9 position. So we're going to have to see if they can figure out how to deal with that. For those taking part in the quest today, we have an IS-6 available for everyone. Remember, if you complete all the requirements, if you do the requirements, you're in for a chance of winning the IS-6. You don't automatically get the IS-6 for completing the quest. Um, be patient, listen to the instructions from Nightbot, and then everything is golden. Now, Daki, they're kind of gathering up here in that top corner again. It's a very, very big trap from Kaza Crew. That's the only way to put it. It's a trap. It's a massive one. They want Ding to drive down that one two line. Kranwagen in a bush. Bacha in a bush. D2 Bacha also spotting. They have every single tier 10 in position to quickly rotate or start shooting if they see a single spot in that one two line. So that's going to be interesting. Ding just trying to get some information, seeing if they can find out where the tanks are located. I mean, they know where Highway is, but they have no idea where anybody else is. That's interesting to see. And question is, Koritz is now moving down the zero line, so it seems like, oh, well, not really. He's just making a spot. And Ryan, remember what I told you from the lineup in the beginning? Mm-hmm. Um, Disney, no call me Piotr. Exactly. But Komi Piotr was in the last round. Mm -hmm. But he, so was, he played like every single round up until last Maybe week. it's just dependent on the tanks they're using. Mm -hmm. I Maybe. mean, that's what a lot of the other teams have been doing. Oops said that they would continue to rotate based on maps and based on vehicles. I just wonder if Ding will take this uh, trap. They're a team that always really, really thinks hard about yeah, what they're going I to do. I don't think Ding would, would fall for it. I somehow don't feel like they're going to fall for it with Kuritsa's position as well. Ding, to seems me, unlikely. Haiba actually just took a hit there. Um, when did Hyba get shot? Was that just now? Or? Probably just now. Probably either breakneck or shockish. I mean, oh, the I7 is very, yeah. very, very armored, but it's not impenetrable. The gun mantlet is. You can go through it. Yep. You can go through it. Uh, now, I think if, if you were going to catch a team out with a bait and a trap like that, I think it's going to work only on the less experienced teams. So something like a gun runners or e -Suba. Well, People always like to trap against thing. If you remember, Gohart tried it as well against thing and it didn't work out, so I don't feel like it's going to work out this time. It always seems to be when it comes into a brawl, Ding just have better shot discipline. They're better at taking guns out of the game rather than spreading damage across the boards. And even if they do spread the damage across the board, they're better at just then finishing off the tanks when it comes to the second round, you know, once everyone's off reloads, when the bat chats have reloaded their clips. Well, five minutes and 60 seconds left. Ding still has a lot of time available. And with Koritz moving down, he will get spotted. But it's just easing it, and... That's the bush that you guys were saying previously. You and Mojo both said teams should just start blind firing that area. Mm -hmm, but I think Isna will get spotted very soon. He needs to run away now, or he's dead for sure. Isna making the move, still unspotted, getting away safely. It looks like he'll probably stop in the river, perhaps. Maybe he'll go to A8, but if I was him, I'd go all the way across the A-line, because so far he has no support, and Ding can take the eastern side if they want to, but perhaps that's exactly what Kazna crew wants them to do as well, because they have the Kranwagen, and they have the E5 that can play the rails very effectively, but Kurit is getting a lot of information here for his team. If he goes all the way up to A0, and he doesn't see anybody, then he is going to be like, okay, they're all they're over all here. They're all in the woods, don't go there. And look already, the rotation from Ding. Nobody's on that side anymore. That's the correct thing to do. I don't think 1-2 line is an option for them right now whatsoever. I mean, looking at it, they drive down 1-2 line, they die. That it, that's just it. There's just too many tanks. They'll take the initial damage, and they won't have a gun overmatch or anything of that sort. So they would die instantly. Isn't it still here? It's still not in the clear. Of course, with Sixth Sense, you have the spotting delay. If these tanks from Ding aim and Kuritz goes down to spot, and Isn't gets spotted very quickly, he could still die. Yep, I mean, they're starting to set up the crossfires. You can see the two bat chats as well moving across. Positive and Mary setting up their position for the gun lines. And who's going to be the one to cap here, Daki? It has to be Kuritz, I think, that has to cap, isn't it? Really? Be careful. Dangerous game, isn't it? Dangerous game. Breakneck gets spotted. He is driving towards his neighbor, looking at the point of view from Breakneck. Isn't already Oof. gone. A little, a little bulb inside his head saying, mate, now's your time to go. Well, thank God he went because... 
with those tanks aiming, he could be done very quickly. This is what I like from Dingdo. They see the fact that the tanks are out of position and they're going to put double cap pressure here already. That will push it down to 53 seconds. And don't forget, they can push that down very quickly at any given time. If Kazakur is late, they'll push Elin on towards it as well and they'll triple cap it if they have to. So Hyper's already moved up to the tracks. The rest of Kazna crew are rotating slowly down the other side. This is dangerous because we've seen this before with teams being caught out at the moment, Daki. Now, Shockish is moving back. Alien and Hulknik, only Hyper's spotted. The rest of Kazna coming through the middle. Now, I think this can go... I mean, this is going to go right to the wire again. When are they going to move this extra player over? Well, Kazna crew is going to have to push in as soon as those Bachelors get there. They won't have time for anything else. So as soon as those Bachelors hit the rails, that's it. Okay, Kasna crew getting over, and let's listen into the team speak of Ding as we can hear how this fight's gonna go. He will be reloaded soon. Minus how much he should. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna push Kran. Ah, просто прочитаны. Дали усилили максимально. And you could hear the the frustration there of Hulknik as he went down there just at the end. And poor Yizni left all alone here for Kasna crew, and that was a very nicely executed push there from Ding. A very nice bait from Ding. Yeah, I mean, it was the correct thing to do, put double cap pressure. By the way, fun fact, if they put triple cap pressure, Kazna would never have gone back to the Never cap. got there in time. I mean, it, it depends. Like, Kazna crew knew how much time they have. So if there was triple cap pressure, they know they'd have to push in quicker. Yeah. So perhaps they would have gotten in on time. But in this exact situation, the way Kazna crew drive, they wouldn't have gotten back. But with triple cap pressure, things would be different. But yeah, they pushed over. And main factor there is when you have to push over like that, you saw Durs next, um, Durs and Vetso had to push into that little city. It's easy to track them as well when they come over the rails it's, like it's that. It's not just that. They, they, they're forced to go onto the enemy's battleground. Like, they're forced to go into that little city, which then results into the fact that Positive and meritorious, both survived on a one shot. You can see Nexus was trying to destroy the house at one point. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> but instead they killed theirs, they killed Vetso. And they kept their bad shots alive, and a gun in the game is very important. Yep, yep, indeed. They had so many guns there for so long there. It was only at the very end that um, Hulknik went down. He was um, top player for his team there. 3.2k damage there, seven shots, two kills. Hulknik playing like a beast. Shockish actually doing great when he doesn't get killed at the start of the battle, coming in their second top damage there. Then Stefan and Breakneck again, just consistent Breakneck and Stefan all the time in that top four, top five area, always those two players. Yeah, and Hulknik also in there, it's going to be one happy Mojo. Mojo's going to be hit. Today's his birthday right now, while I remember, everyone in chat, please say happy birthday Mojo. So when Mojo looks back in this, he sees all the happy messages for his birthday. He was very happy we got everyone to say it yesterday as well. Yep, but yep. today's his birthday. And Kurit's there, uh... Good pick, right? Well, he's in the lineup at least, so it was better than my pick from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, Mojo has Hulknik, and Hulknik is Mojo, Mojo had Hulknik, and Hulknik is doing an absolute beast at he the game He was top right damage now. dealer in the last match yeah. as well. I think I know the rankings for next week. That's going to be Mojo ahead of both of us. No, he won't be ahead of me. <laughs> He'll be ahead of me at least. But still, we're still going to all three of us claim points. It's going to be harder for people to win gold. Sorry, guys. Sorry, but we're taking this kind of serious, you know? If you want to beat us, try. Yeah, but Ding there, taking it slow, taking it steady, realizing the positions coming out from Kasna crew, adapting and doing the correct thing. Kasna crew is very hard to, you know, when you take the initial damage, you're like high about it. Yeah. yeah, he went down to a one-shot pretty much instantly to win the trade-out. I mean, Ding has the gun pointed in the right direction. Kazakru has to peek. There's only if major mistakes come out from Ding that they can actually lose that round. Like if Marion Positive stayed on the cap too long and died, which they didn't. It was um, it was reminiscent of the Ding of old. It's the cool cam, even their team speak. They're cool, cool cam, cam collected. collected. Yeah, very. The thing very, is, uh, 
the thing, it's, you know. If you know the words, when though. I, when I was in the team as well, we were always very cool on TeamSpeak until after the match. Until after the match, then. So not not like how it is with Oops then. We start laying into each other after the after match the is match. over. Okay. But then the, there's nothing left. Yeah. <laughs> now let's have a look at the lineups for round two and see the vehicle's going to be brought here. Now, S tanks on both sides, Daki, both attack and defense here. Yeah, attack, S tank. Can be used very well if you do get it down that one two line, for example. The S tank can do the damage, can put that DPM on. He can penetrate another S tank as well if he aims well. Uh, but he can penetrate those heavy tanks very easily, those bat shots as well. So there's that. Honestly, Ding, this lineup, it's a standard, it's a good lineup. Kazna crew with the SDRV. Oh. Thing is, they have two bad shots, so they have very little rotational force, like real rotational force. Force. That's why I just like Ding's lineup that little bit better. Okay, well let's see if Ding can make it work for them. Are they going to take the lead here, three to one, or are Kasna crew going to bring it back to two two? Oh, both sides rushing over for this one-two line dominance, Stacky, and I think that's where we might end up seeing the fight here, unless there's any kind of major rotations later on. You might be right. You might be right. Might happen like that, but I think the tanks available here from Ding will be sufficient to deal with it. I think so. I really do think so. Koritz getting the better of Isna, Isna there. Koritz is the most annoying scout I see on Prokhorovka. Every time he fights on a scout one-on-one, -on -one, he always seems to get that first shot. I don't know how, but he managed just to do it. But yeah, so far I think Ding's position is superior. Um, for if it comes to a head-on-head -head clash, Ding should win it, unless that S tank can get to do the damage or the fire, and it's not even going to take so long before the engagement's going to come out because Kazna crew is already pushing forwards, just like you said, Ryan. Kazna crew going with the choo-choo train, and Daki, this might actually be a good idea to listen to Kazna crew to see how they plan to get this to work. Team from leading, this is going to be a prolonged fight. You need to deploy Exil to the second hole now. What is this? Okay, take some, take some good okay, it's not seven. Okay, go kill, go kill, go kill. Oh, they're fucking numerous here. I lose my corpse. Don't. Yeah, use your corpse. Someone finish? I finish. They're all here, basically. Fucking five tanks sitting here. Fucking retards. Fucking five tanks sitting here. So they here. did exactly what we did. And not only that, they are all around the corner, mate. Kill it five, boys. Yeah, Kill it five. around the corner. Nice. They're gonna counter push now. Uh, do this. Fucking Mongolites. But I heard some shells landing here. 100%. Yeah, and probably, probably houses. houses. Maybe E5. Oh yeah. If we did the push in forest like in our Badef, we would have stomped them again. And now they get so lucky that they are twice fucking right, for fuck's sake. And this might be bullshit for Horovka. Yeah, twice. Sir. Well, Kasna crew, that's um, Daki, how would you say that? Uh, long have we waited, Kappa outdated, now we debate it. Kazna crew caught out at their own game once again. <laughs> another failed well, one-two line push. Let's, let's just like uh, like sum that up in uh, like sum it up in one word, but be a little bit disrespectful. So I'm not going to do that. I uh, now I compl now I'm just thinking about the one word. What was I going to say? That let's just say they were not happy. <laughs> no. <laughs> let's just say they're not happy. Uh, let's keep it at that. I, I mean, mean uh, like, <laughs> honestly, Kazna, just whatever whatever tactics you have involving pushing the one-two line, just don't do it. Please, just don't do it. I mean, on defense, it didn't work yesterday. It's, it's the worst on, thing on ever. On attack, it's it didn't work It's the worst thing today. ever, though, falling to your own tactic. Yes. <laughs> and then, like, oh, they're lucky. It's like, Dude, they're not lucky. They I, read I, it. I love that when we tune in. We need to go to the second hole. Forest is clear. Oh, wait. The no, forest is not gonna, clear. It's going to be a prolonged fight here. <laughs> no. no. It's going to be a quick fight. Prolonged fight? <laughs> what exactly are you talking about? They, They're they, not in the forest. Oh, yes, they, they are. They're just like this. Like, <laughs> We're Lunch. like, we're like, they're not in the first, like, oh, no. this is going to be good. Great time to switch into team speak. Um, nice, <sighs> nice fight there. And nicely baited trap there by Ding. Kasna well and truly debated into that one. 
Uh, holding it there, having a little bit of farm. Hyper carry. Break night. Well, hyper carry. I mean, in the SDRV, it's expected. It's two rounds in a row, though. Yeah, but in the in, in the gorilla, what did you play last gorilla time? Gorilla last yeah, time, yeah. Now in the SDRV, when this kind of push happens, you can't say hyper carry because it's expected from the SDRV. He, ne he needs okay. to do that. If he doesn't, they lose. So if he, we see it every single time. If the team pushes one two line, the SDRV needs to do that damage. He doesn't struggle with doing it either. Because most of the tanks, for one, can't pan him. So he needs to do that. Yeah, how about Aaron the eyes? Poor, poor Haiba, yeah. He was the battering ram for it. He was at the front of the Both train. Both Strokish and, and Haiba were just used as go yeah. here, shield. <laughs> everyone in front, everyone behind them. Vetso was uh, focused down quickly as well, and Nexus. I mean, it was really unfortunate for casting the crew there, but I mean, they tried to do the exact same thing the last round, and it didn't work for them. So I can understand the frustration of being caught out by it but hey guys come on you did I the exact same tactic first i round. have a question for you okay if hybrid thinks three minutes and five seconds is a prolonged fight uh, he didn't uh, what does he think is going to be a short fight he i didn't, mean he he didn't expect them all to be there to be uh, fair when let's he said just that. say that's we true. cut we cut to team speak <laughs> at the perfect spot just as he said it's going to be a prolonged fight and then just when he then got through the next bit it was like as he said there's Five here, he said. Well, he didn't see it. It was a great, you know. honestly, it was a great strategy from Ding. I like the way they, and what cast number two was the right up, thing as well. The way they set up, they made it seem like the forest was clear because they were all waiting in positions. No, but if you looked at what Ding were doing, Ding were actually lining up to do their own push at the they, exact same they time. They might try to they push. They almost got caught out perhaps, themselves. They perhaps, almost went head to head in the train. Perhaps their plan was to push the one two line with the I seven at one point. Yeah, we, they had that we, lined up. We will never know. It might just be as well that they had the same like thing. Like sand people, they were trying to hide behind the IS-7, yes. so you couldn't tell their numbers. And they had no spotter ahead of them, so with the fact there's no spotter ahead of them, Kazna didn't seem very because there's no RU, there's no battery yeah. in the bushes. So that's Ding, a fair point. That might be the plan as well. Ding just sits around the corner. They won't expect we're here because we didn't spot them until they're here. Well, we're going on to steps now. Very mobile lineup here, Daki, from Ding on the attack. Although that IS-7 anchor there for them as well. Yeah, IS-7 on attack, we have seen that multiple times. Uh, let's just say it's going to be a question if he has binos or if he doesn't have binos, because we made a video about this, you know. And if he has binos or optics, that allows them to go back towards that eastern side and spot the RU on the climb and perhaps even kill him if they get lucky. I think he will have binos. We've seen that a lot of the time from Ding doing that. Usually it was sh shockish playing, I it, think. It depends, you know. It. Sometimes if your strategy is for the number one base, you don't really need binos. Well, let's find out exactly how this one's going to go. Ding currently casting the crew 3 to 1. We're now going on to Steps. Steps, the most open map in the league. The attacking team appears near the rocks at the bottom of the map, and the defending team starts at the top. Bases are located near the railway and on the green. The best way to control them is to use the lowland near the second base. The attacking team usually begins the attack from the rocks and the railway, but sometimes they can attack through the green. Teams often drag vehicles from flank to flank, so both teams usually pick light vehicles with a good camouflage rating, but sometimes use tanks with a strong turret and even an SPGs. Okay, now who's going to take this one? Will it be Ding going 4 1 up or are Kazna Crew going to bring it back to 3 2? Ding are attacking on the red side, Kazna Crew are defending on the blue side. Ding, their strategy seems to be towards the number one base actually. Isn't it's going to climb here on the side? Nice style does it from the first, that's good. Uh, just Got to be question because Kazna Crew is actually trying to climb, and that is always very, very risky. Stefan going for the other climb. He gets up to that really quickly, Daki. Now he's got to do it. Are you will spot it now? He has to drop. And he drops because he sees Kreets, and Kreets sees him. And it's actually, good for Vessel thing. got spotted there. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, he knows that he has to drop off because mm -hmm. Kreets will spot him if he tries to climb, and he will die for that. He's trying it again. He's trying it again. He might make it on the second try. Nobody from Ding will be spotting now. He still has to be so. No, yes, okay. He can now still recover. Now it's the wibble wobble. Recover. It's risky, Stefan. Risky. Hulknick's going up to that spawn area. Hulknick is spotted, so they can see if I somebody don't think, moves. I don't think they will, uh, they they will find Stefan. No. Nope. But the thing is, things are already rotating. They're already going back towards the other side because wherever the IS-7 goes, the rest of the team will soon follow. So Meritorious is already in H3. The rest of the team will soon follow after him. They kind of know that a Bachelor going up there is a possibility. But Ding, and they're num they will be number two base now. Mary actually kind of starting to move back a bit. Now, does Mary have the binos that you were predicting yes, earlier on, Dago? Did you have a look at that earlier on, yeah? Yeah, he has binoculars okay. on his IS-7. 
Uh, that is interesting. I just don't know how they're going to deal with Stefan now because... Yeah, he's actually coming up the way. They should know that it's a possibility for that bad shot to be up there. They haven't spotted that for a while. Not sure what Meritorious is coming to do back over here. Everyone's moving away but Meritorious. Is he just not listening to everybody? No, they're going to do <laughs> some sort of push. Oh, something through the, the middle here. Something through the middle and try and catch some Kazna crew tanks on A5, A6. But Stefan will just be a nuisance the entire game if they don't figure out he's there. Do if, they find him is the question. If they move up and they see Stefan or they get spotted, will they know that Stefan's in that area? Um, if they get spotted, they will spot Stefan in return because they're so close. And the thing is, though, if... Ooh, Vetsu needs Christ to be careful spotted, here. Vetsu spotted. Vetsu taking 517 damage there. He's having to back off. Shots coming over from the shoulder. Stefan peeks. He's spotted. Kreet sees him. And now they know exactly where he is. And Stefan taking already half his health straight they away knew. there, Daki. They knew. Let's just say they knew he was there because Positive was aimed there permanently. You could see he didn't even have to move his gun. He knew Stefan could be there or anybody from Kasna crew. This is also the thing, though. If you see a defender back off from the rails, there's two things. Either they just want to lose the round, yeah. or... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's just <laughs> one tactic. You, you didn't yeah. expect that one. I that's did not <laughs> expect that one, no. <laughs> Either they just want to lose the round, or they want to—they have somebody up in that elevated position and they know they don't need that fight. Because <laughs> if you leave that number one base with a lot of time, you can cap it. And now this is a <laughs> bad situation for Kazna crew. Because Ding knows how to counter climb if they want to, and Stefan's already half HP, so they can play around that, and I think they will Staying counter climb up. and yep. kill Stefan. And Ding, I mean, Kazna has to make a rotation quickly and make sure to block it off, but I don't think it's going to work out for them. I really, really do believe they're in big, big trouble. Positive playing peekaboo in the middle there to try and spot out any kind of rotation. She's shockish and Kareets on the far side as well on the mini map as they're rotating around. Kasna crew getting themselves over the rails here. Then they're going to line up for the counter push with the little. Positive needs to get out. Line up here. Positive actually. But if Kasna crew counter push to middle, for example, if they believe that thing is climbing. Positive, yeah, positive is in a dangerous spot actually. He can get over that area safely. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to say. Like, uh, it's like if Kasna crew expect the counter climb to come out, then, you know, then counter push in the middle would be an option. They're lining up for it. You can see Stefan Elaine Hulkneck break. Stefan neck. won't see him until it's too late. I mean, you have to take a two thing instant into account. They have to climb up. And Hyper is pushing the middle as predicted. Hyper might lose positive for this. Positive. I mean, he's hiding behind the rock. He knows it's coming. Stefan knows it's coming as well. He's going to try and get shots into here. Now, can Ding do this? We've seen teams fail it before as well, but Ding should be able to do this one nice and easy. Bit like a snooker shot. Everyone gets the line up, pushes up breakneck. Very, very nicely done there. The thing is, look at positive. Like, uh, look at the positive right now. Vetsu got spotted early, and positive kind of, you know, got, got warned. He got afraid. He seemed to be aware. And I don't think Break is climbing on the normal spot here, is he? It's Maybe a bit he further over. He's okay. Positive's taking a shot, but he can run north now as the rest of his team comes back to defend him. Now, Mary's taking a bit of damage, as is Positive's taking a bit of damage, but right now, I mean, it's still there for Ding. Mary taking a huge amount of damage actually right now. He's down to a one shot, 157. Looks like Stefan actually clipped out into him. Hybus now come around trying to get a drop. Breakneck's going to get a drop on Stefan, but everyone else is falling back down. Yusni's going to come down. Easy kill here for Breakneck. Now, what can the rest of Ding do against this push from the middle? And Kasna, as Vessel might be falling here, and Kasna, as he does, Positive still surviving. He's on a one shot, but he can get shots back out into these tanks of Kasna crew, and they're not killing another tank right now. Kasna need a kill vitally. Yeah, Kasna need kills, but even Breakneck from the back is chiming in, and they're just catching the tanks out of position. Yes, Meritorious made him a little bit of a mistake, but Positive here, he survived. Very crucial. And four tanks down for Kasna. Crew. Positive surviving and getting the kill there at the end there onto Hyba as we see the TVP coming over the middle here of Nexus. Nexus is going to try and get shots to the rest of the team. Kareets is probably going to want to peek and shoot him in the back. Yisne is chasing after the bad chats on reload. What can Kareets do here against Positive? He has, oh sorry, against Nexus. He has no ideas on the reload. Great shot there from Yisne on Positive. It's not going to be enough though because Kareets will do a ton of damage towards Nexus before he gets out and Kazna crew they try to recover but it won't be enough Nexus will get off reload get Kuritz but at that point it's still a 4v3 and Nexus already expended all his shots Nexus is down now that's Meritorious getting the kill onto him as we see the tanks do Diplomat here close up with Breakneck at the moment trading shot for shot Crown Wagon's out Breakneck still has one more he bounced though Crown Wagon's going to oh he thought he could perhaps ram him there take off the last bit of damage but Diplomat's still surviving Shovery said nope Shockish gets that one and Ding win this one 4-1 to one. 
unfortunate for Kaz and the crew, they had the great starting defensive positions, but just couldn't hold them. Did they really? Well, did did they really have the defensive positions? Because they seemed aware, they seemed aware that this was a possibility. Positive was already aimed at Stefan, so whatever Ding was going for, they already knew that. Kazna crew might have a climber. Might there. have a climber, and they were ready to counter it. They were very, very ready to counter it. It was well done as well how they baited it out because Kareech drove out and they, they spotted Vetzel. Vetzel backed off. No other shots came against Kareech, so Kareech thought when he turned around, then Stefan's like, "Well, I Stefan can perhaps shoot peaked. shot Kareech." And then when he yeah. did that, he got himself spotted. So, like we always say, there's no if you're Stefan up in that position, peak. you never peak until they start capping. Even, even. Um, how to say, uh, Mary made it close for Kazna crew because honestly, Mary Torres and Elias 7 has no need to drive forward oh, yeah. at that point. He needs to wait because Breakneck, you know, massive fuck, ma massive play by him, almost, almost, <laughs> almost. Massive, fantastic play there from Breakneck. Exactly. Yes. Ryan, that was almost. Yes. Hey, I didn't say anything, mate. Uh, I saw you look at me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, massive carry there from him. The thing is, Mary Torres should not drive down the rails. Because he, Stefan just clipped him. He knew that's the yeah, last thing he could so, do. Yeah, it was so silly. Yeah, Mary, Mary needs to sit back a little bit, wait. Then uh, Breakneck climbs, kills Stefan. He takes three shots for it, right? But what does it matter? If, if Stefan drops off, then Mary Terriers drives forward, shoots him in the side. He takes the rest of the shots. They split it evenly. What Ding did very, very well in this round, though, there's, there's, there's two things. Like There's a lot of talk, there's a lot of talk about, about that round. What, bit more, what made positive scare? is Vetzel being spotted very far back, driving yeah, straight down. Yeah, because Vetzel was behind the two exactly. other tanks. Exactly. Yeah. The two other tanks drove in there unspotted, but Vetzel getting spotted back so far away made positive spider sense tingle, and he was like, something's not right here. Nobody would push the middle road so aggressive. So he went further back. And then two bad shots came to help him as soon as they did the boost, because yeah. they knew. They knew. They spotted him at that point. And then Shokish and Kuritz came straight over the middle and killed those tanks. That's where Kazna crew kind of failed because they lost four tanks while Ding had everybody pretty much alive. And then you need to start expending shots on your remaining tanks to kill those one-shot tanks, which then again is not in your favor because you saw Nexus had to kill tanks, could, uh, Isn't had to kill tanks. They didn't do much damage. So round two here on steps. Can Ding now on match point take it to 5-1? Or will Kasna bring it back to 4-2? Well, let's look at the lineups here, Dak. We see Ding going with double one one three. Double one one three on the defense. This could be uh, rails if they so choose it. Kasna crew with the FE two one five B one one three Kranwagen. We have seen this lineup from them um, against. Oops, I don't know if they played it yesterday. I don't. I don't remember, so I don't think so. Um, the two one five B was used in Ghost Town. That was an unusual yeah, pick for Ghost Town. But they have used this tank setup before, and it was against Oops, but not the previous time. The time beforehand. They used it to control the entire middle roads. Like they had one heavy tank in the north side, they had one heavy tank in the middle, they have one heavy tank in the southern part, and they try and lock off any rotations coming out from the entire team from from oops. So perhaps they'll go for a same same, same strategy. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Now, can Ding do it here? Let's jump into the action here on steps and find out Ding are on the red side defending and it's Kasna crew on the blue side attacking. It's going to be interesting to see. The 113s are going towards the rails so far, so defending the rails. It's going to be interesting. Are you 251 climbing on A8? Double batch are going towards the south. I'm wondering what Ding is going to do with that. But Kasna crew, look at this. They're going straight aggressive on towards the east. We have seen Kuritz dominate from this position, though. If he can get up far enough, it'd be very interesting. And it seems like Ding is just trying to bait out Kasna crew with those two batchas, but Isna, smarter than this, is just going aggressive. Might do some damage. Takes some in return, but now Breakneck and Hoknek. On the run. Breakneck and Hulkneck backing off here back towards base two. And this is an all in from Kaz now. They're going for it, Daki, all the way. But look at this. Ding are coming back and they're preparing for it. Yeah, Ding just have to go back and hope Kuritz can get up all the way. I don't know if he's up all the way just yet. Is he going to try? Let's see. I'm watching him right now. He does this climb very, very effectively. Yes, 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 yes. Great stuff by Kuritz. He does get spotted, but he's up. He's up. And they missed him like seven, eight times. They've missed him. He's up. That is crucial. Now, here's the thing as well. We have seen Kareets do an absolute truck ton of damage from this position when a team is locked down in that area. Kazna crew have gone in for the all-in tactic here. This is going to be an all or nothing here. Can they take this one back or ding? Can they smell blood? Are they going to say, guys, we can take this five and one? Let's push it. 
Let's see, Koritz can do so much from here. It's such a nuisance. The vets are taking some damage in his FA215B. Now Koritz is so annoying. I mean, he doesn't always have to peek. He's just he's just the threat of him being there that's going to be annoying. And he can start doing chip damage on towards Vetso, shot after shot. He's in trouble. Now Kasna crew, I don't know. I don't think this is going to work out for them. They're probably going to try and kill the 113s by peeking up from here. But I think the reloads, yeah, break will be there, available. I think things should hold on. This is it. This is all in from Kasna crew. They're going for it. As shot comes out already there from Alien Breakneck and Hulkneck. And once again, look at this from Kareets. He can just farm damage into there. One shot into theirs already. Doesn't do any damage though. Nexus taking lots of damage. And again, look at this. Kareets on a free farm up the back here. Hybus now down to a one shot. Will Kareets pick him up here? Yes, he does. As Kareets is just saying, look at this. But in the meantime, he's lost two tanks. He's lost Breakneck. He's lost Alien in the back chats. And Daki, I mean, it's still everything to do for, but Kasna crew just don't have the HP left in this fight. It's over. It's completely over. It's done. Kasna crew with the all-in. It's not working. It's over. Ding! Showing in this match that they are dominant. And they're back. They're back with a vengeance. And this was Kasna crew... I don't know. I mean, yes, it was close at times, but ding. 5-1 story tells itself. Look at this, Kreech just up there once again, he's just like, guys, just let me go, just let me go, unleash me, as he just farms damage from his position, he's, he's not safe, nobody's safe from him, he's just pumping out shot after shot after shot on these tanks, missing unfortunately there, as another shot comes back at him there, Yisne shooting over his shoulder, but positive here with four shots to go, he's going to finish off Yisne, and Ding are going to secure the win here, five to one, which has been their most dominant win in these three um, matches between these two teams, so a very, very strong performance here from Ding. Amazing performance, they missed Kareets like seven or eight times within a second, he knows how to do the top part climb, so he doesn't have to go all the way around, he did it, Kasna crew seemed arguably set up for it, but they've missed him like seven or eight times. If they hit three shots out of that, he's dead. He's so good at that 